What it do, Faith Chapel students? My name is Roger Parker Jr. and I'll be the MC for today. Now you may be wondering, why am I in a car? Well, I just want to give you an example that God can meet you anywhere that you are. Whether you're in your room, whether you are in a bathroom, whether you're in a kitchen, or whether you are in a car, God will meet where you are. Somebody put a clap emoji in the chat to let yourself know that God will meet you wherever you are. We're so glad you are here. On behalf of Minister Alondio and Dr. Angela Hill, we would like to say welcome to Faith Chapel Students. It's going to be a great time. Are you excited? If you're excited, put some fire emojis in the chat. Let's put some fire emojis in the chat now because we're about to come with some heat. Let's just lift our hands, young people. God, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. We honor you. We appreciate all that you do, all who you are. God, we thank you so very much for your faithfulness towards us. We thank you, Lord God, that you never give up on us. Yeah. And we thank you, God, that you always there to help us. God, we just give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Young people, today I have uh, not a stranger with us. <clears throat> He's a uh, part of Faith Chapel students. Um, and so his name is Roderick Parker Jr. And we're so excited to have him with us today. Um, he's going to be with us today, next Sunday, and some Sundays down the road as well. So um, he's no stranger to us at all. So Roger, you want to say something to the young people? I love y'all, man. <laughs> I love y'all. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, so <clears throat> we going. Uh, we've been talking about for the last um, weeks, few weeks, um, blueprint for success, and we wanted to start you off with this blueprint for success. And I believe it was really the spirit of God that was leading us down this road. And so, Pastor broke. He brought it. The, he brought the heat um, okay. in January, the first Sunday in January. So all we're doing is we're breaking down each component of it into weeks. And so um, we're going to be talking about the next component uh, today, but there are seven keys to success that pastor mentioned. And the first key was, or is make, getting God's mind a priority. We talked about that. We also discussed expect some storms along the way. Um, we discussed that. We also discussed rest in God's instructions. And so uh, you really want to go back and listen to those lessons. And then we also discussed trust God's good nature. We discussed that. And today, um, and we also discussed resist satanic attacks we discussed that last week this week we're going to discuss confront and conquer your fears so we're going to discuss that um this today and then next week we're going to discuss receive correction with the right attitude all right so <laughs> what i want to do is i want to um read the scripture and then we're going to go into pastor and then I'm going to come back and um, just talk to Roger about what we just heard Pastor say. All right. So um, the scripture is, our background scripture is Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 37. I mean, 35, 37 through 40. And it says this, on the same day when evening had come, he said to them, Let's, let us cross over to the other side. And a great windstorm arose. And the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillar. And they awoke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care? We are perishing. Then he arose and, uh, and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why are you so feel fearful? How is it that you have no faith? All right, guys, what we're going to do, we're going to turn it over to pastor. And then we'll be back. Now, watch this. Watch this. Make getting God's mind a priority. 
expect some storms along the way, rest in God's instructions, trust God's good nature, and number six, uh, face your fears. You got to confront them <clears throat> and conquer your fears. He said unto them, why are you so afraid? Why are you so afraid? Why are you so afraid? Fear is rooted in the belief. Now listen to me. Fear is rooted in the belief that I alone have to handle this situation. It's rooted in the belief that I alone have to fix this situation with somebody else. Whenever you feel that you're alone, you're going to be afraid. Now, listen at this. God never instructs us to do something without him getting in the boat with us. He was right there in the boat. He instructed, but he was in the boat. He didn't instruct and go somewhere else. He instructed, and he was in the boat. God is going to be in the boat with you all the way through the whole year. Hallelujah. Through the whole year, he's going to be in the boat. How long? The whole year. Through the whole year. So what are you afraid of? If you're going to grow this year, you're going to have to do some things that you're afraid of. Growth is going to be outside of your comfort zone. If you want to stretch, if you want to maintain, if you, if you don't want to grow, don't stretch. If you want to grow, you got to move past your feelings of I can't. Oh, I, I, I've never have done. You got to move past it. Now, listen at this. I want to ask a question, two questions, and then we'll go to the final thing. Ask two questions. Number one, why were they afraid? Jesus asked the question, so talk to me. Why were they afraid? You got to shout it out because I can't hear it. Why were they afraid? Huh? Huh? They were afraid because of, you said circumstance. Why were they afraid? Situation. Why were they afraid? Huh? <laughs> when y'all were shouting, it reminded me of how my mama used to do when I was a kid. She stand out on the porch, and she said, Michael! And you could hear all across. <laughs> I got to go because mama called me. Okay, they were afraid because they were focused on the storm. And you can tell by the words that came out of their mouth. So I'm going to ask you a question now, and those of you watching online. Why are you so afraid during this pandemic? I mean, I mean, there are Christians that are terrified. They don't leave the house. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> now, you know I done talked about precautions, vaccination. I done talked about all that. I'm asking you a question. Why are you so afraid, though? Because we focus on the pandemic, the virus. Honey, I'm, uh, they got a new thing out there. I'm a crumb or something like that. Crumb or something, a chromosome or something like that. We don't even know. We can't even pronounce it. And we are terrified. I mean, just terrified. And sit on the word all year long and terrified. Now, you know I'm not trying to put anybody down, but I'm just saying now, I take your precautions. I'm not saying do with unwise stuff, but I'm just saying, come on now. If we're going to be totally terrified, why do we even get in the Word? Did the Word stop being the answer? Do we, faith doesn't matter anymore? Why are we terrified? What you say? The blood of Jesus still works. Oh, now, 
uh, Roger, when Pastor was teaching that right there, like, Damn. so, so let me ask you this: <laughs> What stood out to you from that little clip as it relates to conquer and confront your fears? What what stood out to you? Oh, my I would say, like, I think it's the part where he was basically talking about how it can be uncomfortable because in life, like we, we've been like the world, like tries to train us to think like we we're supposed to live in comfort. Like everything's supposed to be cozy. Everything's supposed to be chill. Everything's supposed to be fine. You're not going to get conflict. You're, you're going to be good. You're going to be fine. But in actuality, in God's kingdom, there's going to be some times where we do things uncomfortable. That's and one good. of those things that are uncomfortable is facing your fears. Like, there's different instances that we can think about, like in the scripture, like the disciples had to face their fears. That was an opportunity for them to face their fears within a storm and use what they learned previously within this chapter to help them in this moment where a storm arose. So I would say just the part where he was talking about discomfort, because my friend and I, we always would say find comfort in the discomfort, Hmm. because in the discomfort, that's where success really lies at. You know, we think things that are comfortable, like, you know, we think, oh, this is this is all fine. But honestly, I believe that's where the success lies in the discomfort because things in the discomfort, it can set you free. Things in the discomfort, it can lead to joy. Things in the discomfort, it can lead to you fulfilling the visions that God has called you to do. That's good. So that's the part I would say that stuck out to me. That's so good. You know, uh, when you were talking, hey, y'all type it up in the chat. What, um, what stood out to you in that little yeah. clip that passed um, communicated what stood out to you that was good Roger I was um I had done a study one time and I was I was doing a study of fear and um what the, even the medical community um states that we were only born with two fears mm. like and it was the fear of falling and the fear of loud noise those were only the two fears. And, and when you mentioned um, about um, the world and, and, and our environments, they train us to be afraid or to be fearful of other things. And not that we shouldn't be cautious because if a, a train is coming and right. you need to cross the track, well, you need to be cautious and know right. that if you're going to cross at the same time, th- there could be some disaster, right? Um, right? So we should be watchful right. um, and, and be alert. But as it relates to uh, fear, um, th- we're only born with two fears, and that's the fear of falling and the fear of um, loud noise. And so, um, so with that being said, would you say that there have been fears that you have been that um, others have trained you to embrace? Oh, that's a good question. The thing that's popping up in my head is death. Mm. And we had this discussion where, like, I was talking about how, like, growing up, like, death was, like, one of the things that scared me the most. I remember, and I bet some of y'all had these questions in high school, in middle school. Your teacher put it up on a board or whatever she do now on Zoom or whatever it may be. And she asked, like, what's your biggest fear? I'll mm. never forget my Spanish teacher asked my class that. And I remember, like, one of them, I tried to avoid it. I was like, oh, I feel a fear of failure, you know, everything. You know, I don't want to make Fs on my grades, but... Honestly, the fear that was really freaking me out was death because, wow. you know, I know where I'm going to go. You know, I know I'm going to go to heaven, but it's still like that, that piece of me that's like in the back of your head is like, ooh, it's kind of, it's kind of creepy, you know? And that's how I felt growing up. Like, I felt like it was, it was a scary thing, but like after discussing it with you and, um, you know, meditating on Ecclesiastes and it says, uh, you know, it's a time for everything you told me about. And in, in Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse two, it says a time to be born and a time to die. Yeah. And then also with yeah. Pastor Mike, when he talks in his How to Win podcast, and yeah. students, if y'all don't have like Facebook or anything, you can go to Faith Chapel's uh, YouTube channel and you yeah. can listen to Pastor Mike 
doing these podcasts on healing. He's doing podcasts on a long life. That's good. Now he's doing one on uh, power from heaven. And um, he was talking about we're satisfied with long life. That's good. And was uncomfortable, but as I keep meditating on something that I'm uncomfortable about, then I will grow the confidence to be like, okay, everything's going to be fine, and which it will. You know, so that's one of the things that, you know, I was I was trained in like being fearful of. In First Corinthians chapter 15, um, Paul is communicating in verse 55, it says this, O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The sting yeah. of death is stand, sin and the strength of sin is the law, but thanks be unto wow. God who gives us the victory through yeah. our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we got victory over death. Like, oh yeah. Um, so I am um I'm, I'm glad you brought that out. Um, and I believe we're gonna live a long life, young people. Like we I believe long life is ours. Um, uh, but death has no sting. Um, yeah. so that is that's so good. Um, so Roger, what would you say to uh a young person who is um um, challenge and um, different fears that they may be dealing with. What would you say to them? You know, honestly, I don't know. I feel like a lot of young people right now, like dealing with the the same thing. I don't know. Going back to the death thing, like I feel like a lot of people you want who are watching right now could be dealing with that right now. I feel like I need to pray for them, so I'm gonna do that. Go for it. So God, I ask you, I thank you first off for everything that you're doing and what you're teaching us right now. Yes, and I thank you, God, that you've given us no spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. And I, I ask that you help these young people, myself and everybody who's watching, yes. or who's dealing with those fears of yes, death. God. Lord, I pray that you release those, God. We rebuke fear. We bind you in the name of Jesus. Devil, you have no right to come into the minds of these students. You have no right to come to the minds of these teenagers, these middle schools, these people who are watching outside the country, within the country. And I pray that you just break the power, break the chain over this fear, God. In the name of Jesus. Break the chain. Bring peace over them, God. Supernatural peace, Lord. Let them know that they will live a long life. We take authority over suicide. We take authority over everything that is not according to you. And we thank you, God, that we walk in boldness in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen, man. That's so, so good. So good. I appreciate you bringing it out. And, you know, listen, um, um, we'll be back next week um, as we discover, as we discuss receive correction with a good attitude. How many of y'all need to have a good attitude when somebody correct y'all? Uh, yes. so, uh, so, Roger, do you want to um, lead them um, into um, a salvation and rededication? I can. I can. I appreciate it. We thank y'all for coming out. Man, put some claps in the chat or something because this is really powerful and I'm thankful to be here with you, Minister Lundio. And I just wanted to lead you all into salvation. And I want to let y'all know that God loves you and he cares about you. But sin separates us from having a relationship with God. But to fix this, he sent his son Jesus mm -hmm. to die on the cross <laughs> and live a sinless life so that we can have an eternal relationship with him. So if any of you all who are watching right now who want to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and to have eternal life and eternal relationship with him that guarantees you that you'll go straight to heaven. I'm going to lead you in a prayer and I want you to repeat after me and then you'll receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So bow your heads and close your eyes and say, Dear God, Dear God, I believe, I believe that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world, is the Savior of the world. He died on the cross. He died on the cross. For my sins. For my sins. So that I can have eternal life. So I can have eternal life. I want to be right with you, God. I want to be right with you, God. I ask you, Jesus. I ask you, Jesus. To come into my life. To come into my life. And make me new. And make me new. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I'm born again. I'm born again. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm a new creature. I'm a new creature. And I'm going to live for you. And I'm going to live for you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs>
yes, 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 yes. 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 Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Let's awesome. Go. Yeah, yeah. The host gonna give you more information later, but we're gonna do rededication, and then um, the host gonna come back and give you more information about that as well. So if you want to rededicate, um, and you just want to, um, you know, you feel like you kind of got off. Hey, scripture tells us if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Listen, yeah. it's, it's just that it's just that simple. And so if you want to rededicate, recommit, um, just repeat after uh, me, dear, dear father. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for forgiving me. I bring my issue before you. I bring my issue before you. And I ask you I to ask cleanse you me. To cleanse me. From all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. For being faithful. For being faithful. To me. To me. Amen. So that's, yeah. listen. That's it, y'all. Like, so, hey, listen to the host because the host is going to give you more information on your next step. So um, we love you guys. God bless you. See you next Sunday. Bye. Yeah, I'm honking my horn because I'm excited. Congratulations if you just received Christ or if you rededicated your life to Christ. Congratulations. We are so excited for you. Put some clap emojis in the chat right now. Now, if you just received Christ or rededicated your life back to Christ, make sure you text the name Faith Chapel to 94000. That's 94000. Congratulations, man. I'm honking for you. Yeah. All right, so now we are transitioning into our time of tithes and offerings. So you got your tithes and offering ready? Are you ready to give? Because now it's time to give and keep expanding the faith that God has placed within you. Malachi 3.10, it says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse and there will be meat in my house. And I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. You want a blessing? You want a blessing? Me too. Me too. And that's why we give. So repeat this after me. Say, I am a giver. I receive abundance. I receive abundance. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, there are four ways to give. If you would like to give via the app, you can. If you'd like to give via online, you can. If you would like to give through mail, you can. And if you would like to give via text, you can. So you got those four ways. Go ahead and take care of that and be blessed in your giving.